Welcome to Wired Up Retro. You're watching episode number 76. Today's episode is a continuation of what we were doing on the last episode, and that is playing some Intellivision games. I've got my Telegames Super Video Arcade version of Intellivision out, and uh, the nice thing about this console is that it has removable controllers. The original Intellivision did not have removable controllers. I've got one here though. I mean, well, you could remove them, but you had to actually unscrew the console, take it apart, and then unplug the uh, controller from within. Another one that takes uh, plug-in controllers is the Intellivision 2. Unfortunately, the Intellivision System 3 doesn't take uh, plug-in controllers, but, but these two, the light beige consoles, do take pluggable controllers. So uh, if you have one of those consoles, you can definitely get this adapter. This is an, an adapter that's made by an Atari Age member, Grips03. A few years ago, he was making quite a few of them, but then uh, that was discontinued. So if you want to make one of these yourself, um, I did show you the uh, schematic on the last episode. So if you, uh, you know somebody who's really good at putting things together, or maybe you're that person who likes to do that, uh, definitely uh, you can make one of these. And they're really not that complicated to put together. All right, so anyway, um, you can actually put a port for a 9-pin uh, receiver into your original Intellivision if you know the right uh, pinout. And I would invite you to do that um, if you have only that type of console. All right, so anyway, I showed you on the last episode some Atari controllers being used. I have a nice little Atari collection. Uh, there's just a few of them right there that I could use on my Intellivision. Um, I also have a nice um, Genesis collection of controllers, and there are a few I've got in my collection right there. And some of these, uh, you can imagine, could be a whole lot of fun for use on Intellivision games. Um, I also have an NES collection of controllers, and there are just a few of them right there. And again, a uh, nice assortment for Intellivision games. I'm sure you could come up with some uses for those. Um, I also have a nice collection of Master System controllers. So I want to show you those. These are all compatible with the adapter made by Grips03. All right, um, by the way, uh, the originator of this schematic for the adapter is, I believe, Jay Tilton. Uh, back in the 90s, uh, he came up with that schematic. So that's pretty awesome of you, Jay, if you're uh, watching this or if you're uh, out there somewhere. Uh, we really do appreciate the work that you did. All right, so another thing, I'm going to go ahead and just show you Qbert using the Epix 500 XJ for the master system. It's working great. It's very accurate. All right. Took out Coily. Just go to the top, I guess. Oh, no, no. All right. Here we go. Okay. So I want to tell you a couple more things. Let's go ahead and pause this. All right, so basically there are adapters that allow you to go another step further. And the first one I wanna to mention to you is the retro receiver. So let me put in a different game and we'll uh, show you that. Okay, so we've got Beam Rider up on the screen here. And I wanna introduce you to this adapter called the 8-Bit Do Retro Receiver, which is a wireless adapter, essentially uh, enabling you to basically plug this into your Genesis or Genesis compatible adapter, which this is. And then you, once you turn on the adapter, it starts blinking with a blue light. Then you can just tap this button and it starts blinking quickly. So let's say for instance, you wanted to play Beam Rider with this Xbox One uh, Bluetooth compatible controller. Uh, by the way, the original one isn't Bluetooth compatible, but this, uh, this is a newer model for the Xbox One. So anyways, to get it to be working, you're going to have to press this button. Once it's blinking quickly by pressing that button, it'll vibrate for a brief moment, telling you you've got a connection with the 8-BitDo retro receiver. So this will now enable you to play Beam Rider. There you go. Awesome. Now, if you press the second button, you'll shoot off 
one of these three missiles that you have, but I'm going to... Yep. Oh, there we go. Man, that was a... Coming at me. All right. Try again. Control is as good as you would expect. I definitely am not finding any problem with uh, lag in the controller. It looks like it's spot on. I've played this a lot on my 5200. Okay, here we go. I'm going to hit the second button. Oh, I missed. <laughs> it didn't go as fast as the 5200 version up to the mothership there. I have to adapt from one console to the next. So this is um, an adapter. The 8-bit uh, Do Retro receiver is an adapter that works with a variety of different kinds of controllers. It'll work with PS4 controllers, PS3 controllers. Uh, we, let's see, the Wii, I think the Wii original, but I know for sure Wii U Pro controllers. And also Switch, I believe Switch controllers work with it because I got that adapter working with Switch controllers on episode 57 to use with a Hyperkin product called the Ranger to get two button compatibility. It's kind of an interesting episode if you go back and watch that. Let's see what I did with it. Oh, almost got me. All right, here it goes. Let's see if I can get him this time. I have to wait. Oh, no. Nah, I missed. Tougher than the other version that I have. All right, so let me show you um, some of the other controllers that this will work with. I'll go ahead and pause this. All right, so switch controllers will work with it, compatible. PS3 controllers, although I think you have to set this up initially by going to a PC to get it compatible. And then PS4, and I don't have a Wii U wireless controller to show you, but it'll work with that as well. So all these controllers are going to be compatible. And it's pretty awesome to play in television games with current day controllers. Man, who would have thought? That's, that's pretty interesting. So there's another adapter I want to show you, and that is this 8-Bit Do G Bros adapter, okay? The 8-Bit Do G Bros adapter requires batteries, and you basically, let me, let me show this in action. Okay, so we're going to give Lock and Chase a try. So I've got my 8-Bit Do retro receiver here. Turn this on, get it blinking instead of slow blue, get it blinking fast blue. Press the red button on the uh, G Bros adapter, and then press yellow for a couple seconds. Let go and it'll start blinking quick. These two are now going to pair and when it's paired I can connect either a GameCube controller to this or a uh, Wii Classic controller which I'm going to use here. Play that, use that controller. Now we're connected and we'll just go ahead and... And one thing I notice is if you plug it in while it's synced you can't start the game. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the game and let's see if it works now. Oh, you got to select one player. Okay, we're ready to roll. Here we go. Uh-oh. So right off the bat, I noted that the D-pad for this Wii uh, Classic controller is working just really, really well. Unfortunately, oh boy, this is not good. Unfortunately, the um, thumbstick seems to have a little delay to it. Let me just double check that. Kind of wondering though if that may have to do with it being in a wrong position. Let's try that thumbstick again. Oh, that was better that time. Oh, it seems to be working fine now. So it must have been the position. Oh, all right. So yeah, I'm not really good at uh, this game. Okay, so another fascinating thing about this G-Bros adapter is that 
you can actually use adapters in this. Okay, I've got a few. Let me show you these. This one is an NES to Wii Classic um, adapter. So you take your NES controller, plug it in here into the G Bros, then it submits a signal, and you've got NES controllers working wirelessly through this uh, G Bros. Another one I have is this Super NES uh, Classic controller adapter. And again, this will allow wireless SNES controllers to work. I've also got another one, and that's for the PlayStation controllers going through this uh, G Bros. And it, uh, it totally is going to be a nice way to get PlayStation controllers working on your telegames Super Video Arcade or your Intellivision 2. Um, so pretty exciting stuff. Now, um, I did try a RAFNET adapter. This is a uh, RAFNET Super NES to Genesis controller adapter. And, you know, it works fine on my Genesis when I plug a Super NES controller in. But it, it doesn't seem compatible here with this adapter for some reason. So um, I don't know if that's a sign that RAFNET adapters all around aren't going to be workable with this in any way, shape, or form. Or if maybe just this particular model isn't compatible and maybe some of the others um, that might be wanting to be used um, could, could possibly work. I'm not sure about that. So, uh, this is the only one I have uh, that, that would be suitable for this project. Another thing I wanted to mention here is that I've got ColecoVision controllers and they work as one button controllers here in your Intellivision. Now I don't know why you'd want to be a sadist and actually use this on an Intellivision. Uh, no, I, I, okay, let's just forget I said that. All right, so what I'm gonna try here is this original DualShock 2 with this adapter. Let me get it all set up, I'll be right back. Okay, so it actually w went really smooth. It didn't even need to be reconnected um, after I changed out the controller. It just connected automatically, which is nice. All right, so we'll go ahead and play a little bit of Moto Racer. And, okay, standard. Okay, we're gonna have to reset it. And try, try again. Enter. Well, all right, I think I got to the root of the problem, and that root happens to be the Mayflash PlayStation to Wii Classic controller adapter. It just doesn't seem compatible when set up going through these uh, adapters. So I'm going to put this one away. I just rummaged through a box in the basement and found an old uh, thrift store find of mine. This is also a PlayStation to Wii Classic controller adapter. Sure enough, uh, this cheap Chinese knockoff works like a charm. It works very well. So we're going to use that, just keep that in mind if you're going to try to use a PlayStation controller on your Intellivision through this, these adapters. All right. For steering, you can pick directional control for motocross or left-right control. I'm picking directional, where you push the stick in the direction you want to go as opposed to worrying about which direction is left and right. All right, so I'm pressing X for accelerate. This first um, hill and curve happen to be it's a tight curve, so I'm not putting on a lot of throttle right now. Oh, slow down, slow down. Oh, once you hit the grass, you're pretty much going to be spinning out, crashing. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell whether you crashed or not just because the graphics are a little substandard but you know back in the 80s this is what we had and this you know this is actually better at the time than 2600 games anything 2600 games offered the Intellivision was definitely a step above 2600 if not two steps above it oh slow down slow down slow down go 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 oh hit the grass uh but yeah, you got to go a little light on the throttle. It's something that I am gradually learning as I play this game. Okay, here we go. Hit the brakes. Get up there. Now, accelerate. We're going to get ready to go over a couple of ramps. Oh, crashed on the peak there. So some of you might be wondering, is this one of those Intellivision games that uses an 8-direction control, or was it designed for 16-direction control? 
and I checked it with the actual Intellivision controller and that disc pad indicated, it showed me that it's not a 16 direction control uh, controller game. So it's an eight direction. So using this adapter, which is geared for eight direction control, it is working just fine. No, no difference in control compared to the original controller. Now there are certain in television games where it is actually kind of important that you use 16 direction control. I think one I've heard that uh, counts like that is Vectron. So you may want to avoid playing Vectron with this. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Turn around, turn around. Showboating a little bit there. Now, some games have 16 direction control where it's quite pivotal that you have every, you know, all 16 directions to do well in the game. Uh, one of those I've, I've heard about is Vectron. Um, another one, though, that has 16 direction control is Tron Deadly Discs. I'd say the difference is negligible between using the Intellivision control on that game and the uh, eight, eight directional controls of a you know, Genesis or PlayStation controller. All right, so let's move on. I'm gonna show you another PlayStation controller here. Okay, so we got Mazatron up on the screen here. Uh, controllers connected. This is an Interact Barracuda from the PlayStation 1 era. The other controller I was using was DualShock 2, which is a PlayStation 2 controller. So we'll see if the PlayStation 1 controller works well. I've just got it in digital mode, which is mode number one here. Here we go. So on this Barracuda, when you're playing digital, you can not only use the D-pad, but you can also use the thumbstick. And it's just a digital means of control. Okay. That's one way to get him to not chase you anymore. Oh, I went the wrong way. Yep. Uh oh. So this is an eight way control game. Just like that motocross game. Oh, we need to get these. Good. Okay. Keep going forward. You just have to press your shield right when it gets to that. Come, come on, get over there. I'm gonna start using a D-pad. Oh boy, here it comes. Oh, I think it took me out because it didn't last as long as it should have. All right, well, now you can see proof of concept. The PlayStation 1 controller is working. Not just PlayStation 2, but PlayStation 1 controllers. All right, I've got another controller to show you here. All right, so I've got an INTV game from 1986 up on the screen, Hover Force. And we'll go ahead and take a look at what each button will do. There's two buttons, B and A, that you're going to be pressing. B is for the laser cannons. A would be for water cannons. you got the flight controller with the stick, wheel. Uh, air brakes, you press the asterisk. Radar screen, press zero and land and refuel, press enter. We're going to play level one and we'll be a cadet since I'm not really that good. You know, the graphics of this in a way kind of remind me of early 8-bit Nintendo games. All right, off we go. I've just taken off. There's a bridge that we got to go over to the island. This island is under attack. And we are looking for enemy choppers. We're also looking for fires that are being set on these buildings. I'm looking at them from above here. Oh, there we go. Gonna have to go back over there. Oh, enemy chopper at six o'clock. And I'm building, blowing up my buildings. 
But I did catch a chopper there. So I have to look at the map. Oh, I saw a little red dot there. I'm going that way. Let's see how close I am. Getting there. I think there's a fire to put out. near there. There it is. Oh, I just shot it <laughs> with my lasers. Now, let's try the water. Took care of that. Okay, looking for more fires. Oh, there's an enemy right there above me. Okay. Let's see if we can catch up to him. Where is he? There he is. Got him. Oh, I need to go down. You can actually go down while you're watching the map, which is kind of cool. Should show up. There he is. All right. Man, get over there. Got him. Okay, so I've got another controller to show you. I keep showing you different kinds of controllers, Super Nintendo. What could be next? Hmm, I've got a really interesting one for you. Okay, so I've got the XRK tank stick set up to play my Intellivision game Nova Blast by Imagic. Love these Imagic games. Nice silver box, great artwork. Such a great uh, company back then. I've got my overlay in this controller too, just in case you know you forget which button means what. Sometimes popping that overlay in there might be a good guide for you. Um, I've got it set so that you can use either the stick with this button as uh, lasers and that one as a beam, or pressing two buttons together will get you a bomb that you drop under your ship. And uh, you press the two buttons together. That's how this adapter works for button number three of Intellivision controllers. Another option is to use the trackball while playing the game and using these buttons over here on the left hand. So uh, right hand on trackball, left on the buttons. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I'm going to play it on Captain. And here we go. I'll just start with the stick. There we go. The objective really is to save your cities. It's a little like Defender, except instead of saving individual astronauts, you're saving actual cities. And you can see them on that map. Oh boy, there we go. All right. If you're low on energy, you can beam it up into your ship from there. All right. Save the cities. All right, try a little bit on the trackball side this time. There we go. Boy. Cities are getting bombed here. Wow, this is a tough level. It looks like I've got my work cut out for me on that uh, particular game. All right, so um, I will show another uh, tank stick game for you. All right, so you know in our last episode about this adapter, I showed Centipede. I, I'm going to have to try it again. I mean, come on. We got the tank stick trackball. I'm going to have to give this a shot. Okay, we got the uh, joystick working great. Buttons. Buttons working fine. Uh-oh. Missed. I can hit that spider. I just can't hit the centipedes. There, I got two of them. All right, here we go. 
There, took him out. Right, we're rounding up to about 15,000 points here in a minute, if I can keep that last couple of lives going. Ah, well, I made it to 15,000. All right. So, yeah, wow. Really nice control with the trackball, even the joystick's working wonderfully. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about the tank stick today. All right, so we have one other special controller to show you. I think you guys are going to like this one. Well, okay, what better game to play Tron Deadly Discs with uh, than my Tron 80s arcade multi-controller, which I put together on Wired Up Retro number 44 and then featured on Wired Up Retro number 51 being used on my Atari 2600 and 7800 consoles. Um, this was uh, used with an adapter that allows Genesis controllers to work on an Atari, but now we've got um, a controller adapter that allows Genesis controllers to be used on the Intellivision. Let's give it a try. Um, actually, I've tried it a few minutes ago. I was using the splitter method to try to get the stick and trackball methods sped into there with a splitter cable. And I tried a variety of different ways to do it. It just wasn't working with the splitter cable. So I've taken out the splitter cable and, you know, when I set up this joystick, it's designed to use a splitter cable. So I don't have buttons to press. Well, in this game, I actually do, though. I've got the second controller, which allows me to play the game with buttons being fired. There we go. And let's see if we can get the rest of these guys. So anyway, it kind of turned out OK in the end. And I can also plug the joystick in and use that independent of the trackball. The trackball won't be active then. That's OK. There we go. Oh, I just missed him. All right, try it this way. There we go. Take care of him. Yahoo. All right, so I'll show you the, the stick in action as well. Okay, so joystick method. I kind of like it a little better, actually, the joystick method. Plus, the joystick actually says Tron on it, so I, I definitely think the joystick is the way to go if I'm going to play it with this controller. Got him. Got him. All right, next round. So if this was playing another uh, title that used the actual buttons, the, both the one button and two button would work. And I've checked it just to make sure. Played a little bit of uh, uh, Nova Blast. Nova Blast. Okay, let's see if we can get him. Yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, two birds with one stone. Look at that. All right, so I am definitely having some fun here. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this episode. What a great adapter. I hope that more are made in the very near future. I'm hoping that some of you out there who are very savvy at making these things uh, can put your talents to work so we can enjoy playing our Intellivisions just a little bit extra. You know, I've never really had an opportunity to play an Intellivision with anything other than these controllers. And, you know, it's not a bad system, even with that disc. It's just, I kind of, I like changing it up with controls, especially, uh, you know, I was trying that pole position game with that steering wheel on the last episode and really kind of enjoyed that. Although, unfortunately, the steering wheel had a little bit of a dead zone issue. You know what? I actually found out that there's another controller that has less of a dead zone problem. 
So let me just show you that just for the last couple seconds of the episode and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, so I've got my Indianapolis 500 Power Grip handheld racing wheel. Uh, this is a 15 pin PC controller from, I guess, the 90s or early 2000s. And uh, it is a little bit better than the big steering wheel I was trying last episode. It's a control with acceleration here, braking by pushing that direction. Let's give it a try. Also, I gotta change gears by pressing these two buttons. Up gear, down gear. Now, I see a curve coming. I am putting on the brakes and back to the high gear. Just trying to avoid getting off the road into the green. That was close. Oh, I was trying to go to low gear. I just should have put more brake on it. I think my highest score on this game is around 4,500. Let's see if I can beat that. Just gotta pass a car or two. Oh, that was close. Okay. This is the hardest version of pole position I have ever played. All right, 4,600, hey, look. So, if I practiced more, maybe downshifting, applying the brakes a little earlier, Maybe I could get a little further. It's definitely a challenging game. You know, you got to be intelligent to play the Intellivision. So um, if you guys enjoyed the episode, definitely give me a thumb up. And uh, if you've played any of these games and you really like certain Intellivision games that I've played, uh, let me know which ones. And uh, if you want me to play other Intellivision games in the future, uh, I'd be certainly all ears. I definitely would take advice uh, from any of you, uh, as long as the game isn't maybe this hard. Okay. Um, so yeah, all right. I hope you guys had fun watching this and, uh, you know, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. I look forward to producing more videos on, uh, classic game systems, whether they be Atari, ColecoVision and television, maybe Vectrex eventually. We'll see what happens. All right. You guys keep having fun out there. Take care. Thank you.